The neglect of the prophetic scriptures on the part of theologians is all but complete, except for a limited survey of the intermediate state, the resurrection of the body, a passing reference to the second advent, and the eternal state. Theological writers, in some instances, have confessed their lack of preparation to deal with Bible prediction. In the opening of his treatise on the Second Advent, Dr. Charles Hodge states, The subject cannot be adequately discussed without taking a survey of all the prophetic teachings of the Scriptures, both of the Old Testament and of the New. This task cannot be satisfactorily accomplished by anyone who has not made the study of the prophecies a specialty. The author, knowing that he has no such qualifications for the work, proposes to confine himself in a great measure to a historical survey of the different schemes of interpreting the scriptural prophecies relating to this subject. To the same end, Dr. B. B. Warfield, in an article on the Millennium, builds his argument on the untenable idea that there is no reference to such an age anywhere save in so obscure a portion as Revelation 20, without the slightest recognition of a covenanted kingdom for Israel with the fulfillment of every earthly promise. When, how, and where will these covenants be experienced? To Dr. Warfield, the present blessing of the saints in heaven is the millennium. He writes, The thousand years thus is the whole of this present dispensation, which again is placed before us in its entirety, but looked at now relatively not to what is passing on earth, but to what is enjoyed in paradise. Similarly, Dr. R. L. Dabney, the honored theologian of the South, when asked by a former student whether certain interpretations of prophecy were correct, replied, Probably you are right. I have never looked into the subject. It is needless to point out that the attitude of these and many other theologians has been an insuperable barrier to the so-called educated ministry which precludes any attempt on their part to investigate the field of biblical prophecy. It is natural to conclude that a truth is of little importance if the great teachers of the church ignore it. However, even the teacher himself reflects his own training with its determination to disregard all else than that peculiar to the Reformation. Over against this is the statement by Dr. I. A. Dorner, There can be no doubt that Holy Scripture contains a rich abundance of truths and views which have yet to be expounded and made the common possession of the Church. Such indifference or resistance is hardly justified in the light of the fact that over one-fourth of the books of the Bible are avowedly prophetic, and, in the actual text of all the Scriptures, at least one-fifth was prediction at the time it was written. A portion of Bible prophecy is now fulfilled, and attention will be given to the distinction between fulfilled and unfulfilled prophecy. In his Upper Room Discourse, the Savior Having announced the peculiar teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit in the present age, goes on to declare what precise truths the Spirit will teach, and places things to come as first on that list of themes. It is safe to say that no modern teacher of the Bible, be he even an extremist in his disproportionate emphasis on prophecy, would assume to place things to come as first among those important themes and many theologians would not include this subject at all. The supreme emphasis which Christ places upon this aspect of truth should not be overlooked. Incidentally, 
Christ has implied in this statement that none will comprehend prophecy who are not taught by the Holy Spirit. This seems to be true to a large degree in Christian experience. The plea that the prophetic portions of the Bible present problems over which men disagree is not a worthy release from its claims. There are no more problems in eschatology than in soteriology. It happens that, owing to the central place accorded soteriology by the reformers and in subsequent theological writings, that it has had a measure of consideration not given to prophetic truth. Disagreements as divergent as Calvinism and Arminianism have never been urged as a reason for its neglect.